Although noni has been used for thousands of years in French Polynesia, only in the last decade has it been available to consumers everywhere. No one is more familiar with or has studied the noni fruit more extensively than our guest, Dr. Neil Solomon. Dr. Solomon is a Johns Hopkins trained physician and former faculty member at Johns Hopkins and other leading universities. He is also a New York Times best-selling author. He was Maryland's first Secretary of Health and Mental Hygiene, has served as chair of four gubernatorial commissions, and has acted as health advisor to presidents and governors. For 18 years, he wrote a globally syndicated health advice column for the Los Angeles Times Syndicate. Currently, Dr. Solomon works as a global nutritional consultant, serving corporations and non-government organizations of the United Nations, such as the International Council of Caring Communities and the Communications Coordination Committee of the United Nations. Dr. Solomon has been studying Noni for nearly a decade, and his books on Noni have sold over a million copies in the U.S. alone. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Neil Solomon. Thank you very, very much. It is a pleasure to be here. You are a beautiful group. You are truly a beautiful group. And together, we're going to learn about information that's going to make a lot of people beautiful, healthy and beautiful. I'm going to start this lecture with 21 reasons why you should drink noni every day. It could be 221 reasons, but I had to pick 21 that I thought at this time might make some sense because they're the reasons that people tell me that they drink noni. Well, in the 21 reasons to drink noni every day, they're to try to prevent, or if you have the following diseases help decrease your symptoms. Cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, the four biggies of what the people who talked to me said and the, the data I had. And one thing I found was consistent. Stress was the culprit. Stress knocked down all the conditions that help protect those people. Some people got back up, bounced back up, and did okay. Others didn't. But it seemed that the Hesian noni juice in some way helped the majority of the people. What is noni? Well, you all know what noni is. You can see it there on the screen, up on the left-hand corner. As you know, it's really an ugly smelling fruit. It tastes worse. I would never drink it. I would never drink noni juice the way it comes out of the noni plant. I couldn't tolerate it. But that's what noni was. But the reason they tolerated it to the people, it helped them. So the people primarily of Southeast Asia and the Pacific Coast area and the Pacific Rim area they felt that Noni helped them, and so they passed it on from generation to generation. And it was because of that, that that terrible taste didn't prevent them from taking it, because they stayed pretty healthy. Tracing it back from Polynesia, where these people were located, you can find that it had its origin in old India back 6,000 years ago. And there, it was known because it increased longevity. But it not only increased longevity, it not only made people live that they believe longer, but they lived healthier longer. And that's the name of the game. The name of the game is to live healthier. Because if you just live longer and aren't healthy, 
That's no good. And if you go to the Sanskrit writings, you'll find in those writings, the quotes, marvelous, healthful properties. Noni, it has marvelous, healthful properties. Noni juice may help prevent and protect against cancer. There has been research done on noni. And the research shows that it may prevent and it may protect against cancer. Then Dr. Myung Ying Wong from the University of Illinois Medical School started to study noni. I said, what are you doing now? She said, I'm doing research. I do cancer research at the university. I said, how do you do your research? She said, well, what I do is I have animals and I give them cancer and then I give them different drugs to see which ones will decrease the cancer and which ones will allow the animals to live longer. Mm. I said, I got a great idea. Throw some noni in. Just throw some noni in. Oh, she said, I can't do that. I said, why not? Do you use controls? She said, sure. I said, use as a control. Use as a control. Another form of a placebo. See what happens. She did it. And you know what she found? It helped as much as the drugs. I could go through all the work that was done on animals, but this probably summarizes better than any. Dr. Harazumi Kim, she had 15 mice. She gave them all that cancer I told you about. She didn't give any of them noni. At the end of 16 days, every one of them died. 100% of them died. She had another group at the same time. And what she did to that group is she added noni. And every one of them lived. Every one of them lived. That's in the literature. I gave you the reference there in Pharmacology, December 1997. She also presented this. This was presented at the American Association of Cancer Research. This is for real stuff. Do I say that noni cures cancer? No. Noni does not cure cancer. But I believe noni helps in people who have cancer. And I believe that the side effects are minimal to none. So what do you have to lose by taking it? Noni juice may help with arthritis. There's no doubt in my mind that certainly can decrease the symptoms of arthritis. Now, before noni came along, people were using mainly aspirin and ibuprofen. But the problem with aspirin and ibuprofen is they can chew up your gastrointestinal tract. They can give you ulcers. Now, recent data shows that they can raise your blood pressure and give you hypertension. 50% of all people who take aspirin or ibuprofen in some way or another have GI symptoms. Of those who take noni, and 1,675 took it, 78% said it helped their arthritic symptoms. And it helped their arthritic symptoms without the GI problems, without causing them to have ulcers. Noni juice may help decrease heart symptoms. Now, what causes heart problems? There are lots of different things that cause heart problems, but we're going to talk about three things that nobody argues about. One, you can get a clot. The clot can block your coronary artery. If it blocks your coronary artery, nothing can get through. Blood can't get through, it has oxygen and nutrients, and so it's beyond the coronary artery. The other side of it, where there's no blood, that tissue dies. When that tissue dies, that's called a myocardial infarction. And that just means, infarction means death, myocardium is the muscle of the heart, and that's what you have. That then labels you as having coronary heart disease, which is CHD, 
So when you see CHD, that's coronary heart disease. Most of it was due to the clot, secondary myocardial infarction, and then coronary artery disease.